morning is gathered here in the mystery of the hour. We're going to sing it four times to honor the four directions. Let's sing together. Good morning, dear ones. It is so wonderful to see you here today in person, braving the ice and the cold. Thank you for coming. And for all of you joining us from hopefully warm, comfy pajamas at home, we're so happy you're with us. Thank you for sharing this special solstice celebration with us today. I'm the Reverend Shelley Thompson. My pronouns are she and her. And I am absolutely delighted to be here with you. Take a moment and settle in, and for those of you who are here or who have been with us recently and received a pretty white bag, there are ribbons in them, so you want to take a minute and wrestle those bags now, and we'll see if we can pull out those ribbons. We're going to need them before too long here. We are using our best hybrid Zoom COVID world imaginations today. When the time comes to cast a circle, we're gonna know what we mean. And we're gonna do that symbolically together, each with a piece of ribbon. So find ribbon wherever ribbon is nearest to you. Don't worry about the bags, just make sure everybody has a piece. Pretty sparkly ribbon for solstice. Very good. There's other goodies in there for later. There's a tea light to take home for Christmas Eve service and some little treats. What a nice group we had. For those of you at home, we've got a lovely in-studio audience here with us today. A nice, beautiful group. Everyone's busily gathering their ribbons. So at home, if you have a ribbon, a string, Anything that will do, a belt would work, whatever's nearest you, to have um, something with which to help us cast our circle nice and wide all over Calgary. Beautiful, beautiful. This is a very participatory event, solstice, and if this were a place where it were not really cold outside, we'd all be standing in a circle outside around a big bonfire and it would be uh, an outdoor festival. So we're making the best indoor festival we can. I'd like to say a special good morning to our green man. He's going to feature largely in the show. And I am going to take time now to ask us to remember our treaty and land acknowledgement. Remember that we are on traditional territories and there are many traditional languages, all of whose ancestors were here before us from all these nations. We recognize our responsibility to be stewards of the land, to acknowledge that we do so in cooperation with the people of the Blackfoot Confederacy for whom this Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta is traditional territory. The people of the Blackfoot Confederacy are comprised of the Siksika, Pigani, and Gainai First Nations, as well as the Dene First Nation Band, the Sutsina, and the Nakota First Nation, 
also known as Sto Stony Nakoda. And Al Alberta's Nakoda First Nation comprises three bands, the Bear's Paw, the Chikini, and the Wesley. The Chiniki, pardon me, and the Wesley. Mokinsis, the Blackfoot word for what is now known as the city of Calgary, was also home to the Métis Nation of Alberta Region 3. So in offering a land acknowledgement, we honor those who have long been the stewards of this land, and we honor our shared responsibility once again for being good caretakers and good neighbors in truth, healing, and reconciliation. Learning the real truth of the history of this place, coming to know the people who sacrificed that we may be here, and finding a way forward in a good way, a good relationship with them. We acknowledge Treaty 7, signed September 22nd, 1877, was entered into as a collaboration between the settlers and the indigenous peoples, making us all treaty people. This is the season of the coming of the light, and we are going to honor our Christian heritage today by lighting our Advent wreath. Advent is all about waiting for the light to return, which is a reference to the wheel of uh, the year and the winter solstice, and they chose to make the return of the sunlight the time when they honor the birth of Jesus, who is considered the son of God and the light of the world in the Christian tradition. So for the four weeks of Advent, they light four candles. They light on the first Sunday a candle for hope, The second Sunday, they light hope, and they light faith. The third Sunday, we get a pink candle for joy. And the fourth Sunday, we get a candle for peace. And then that center candle will be lit on Christmas Eve. It's often referred to as the Christ candle, the candle that represents the birth of Jesus, the light of the world and the return of the sun. We honor that heritage as part of what uh, brought us to this place and time. And I light now also our flaming chalice, the symbol of our liberal religious tradition. May this solstice light guide us through the cold winter to come. Since the beginning of our human existence, we have noticed the changes in the natural world, adjusted to the gifts and challenges of the seasons, and this time of year in the pagan tradition is often very widely celebrated and honored as winter solstice is this time in our Earth's orbit when it is at its uh, lowest point below the plane of the ecliptic of the solar system and it is that darkest time of year in the Northern Hemisphere. It's believed in Neolithic times that the Midwinter Festival was the last feast or celebration before winter began, and so most of their, if they had livestock, it was the time when they slaughtered their livestock and uh, saved up for the winter and made sure that they really enjoyed those last fresh steaks before winter came, and they had to go through the winter with their root vegetables. The majority of wine and beer made during the year was finally fermented and ready to drink up. The ancients saw the flow of time as circular, not linear. They were watching the seasons and watching the sky, and that's what nature told them. And the changing seasons were understood as a great wheel, the turning of the wheel of the year. To this season, was given the name Yule, the Anglo-Saxon word for wheel. Simple enough. The green wreaths that decorate our homes here are a symbol of the new year and its turning. So today we are gathered to observe the turning of the wheel at this time. At the great gate of winter, we celebrate solstice. In the Northern Hemisphere, this will be the longest night of the year. This year it's occurring on Tuesday morning and that will be the longest night of the year up here. And in this time, in the time of greatest darkness, is also the turning point when the light is reborn. 
After, to, after the winter solstice night, the sun grows stronger and stronger until we reach the longest day of the year, the summer solstice, which is right around June 21st. So these are all the movements of our Earth in our solar system. We're paying attention to our stellar home, to our blue boat home, the Earth, and where it is in relationship to its sun, and how that relationship, that journey around the sun every year affects our life and the way we live in harmony with our planet. Tonight, dark begins to give way to light. Let us then be awake to the night. Let us turn the wheel to bring the light. Let us call the sun from the womb of night. Hi, Susan Cooper. So the shortest day came and the year died and everywhere down the centuries of the snow white world came people singing, dancing to drive the dark away. They lighted candles in the winter trees. They hung their homes with evergreen. They burned beseeching fires all night long to keep the year alive. And when the new year's sunshine blazed awake, they shouted reveling, through all the frosty ages, you can hear them echoing behind us. Listen. All the long echoes sing the same delight this shortest day. As promise wakens in the sleeping land, they carol, feast, give thanks, and dearly love their friends and hope for peace. And so do we here, now, this year and every year. Welcome Yule. A natural element that holds hope for the returning sun and growth is the evergreen. Evergreen, staying green all year, symbolize for us that life is forever present and renewable. Let us call forth the green man's presence in our midst. And I would like to invite anyone now who has not done so already to come and tie their evergreens to the green man. Blush. <laughs> Yay, green man. Winter solstice is historically a pagan celebration. In this more Unitarian celebration, and in the interest of inclusiveness, we will borrow elements from the pagan circle. The circle we make is not to keep out, but to hold in. So now comes the time when we're going to invoke our ribbons. And uh, I'd like you to take your ribbon and hold it in front of you. And um, while, uh, while I make the, um, the invocation, may the spirit and intent brought by us to this holy space on this holy day bless our circle of inclusiveness and fill us with the laughter, wonder, and joy that this season brings. So now in one movement, let's all raise our ribbons up and put them from your front to the back of your chair around behind you. And that has cast our circle. So now I am going to invoke and honor the goddess and the God. Holy mother, great goddess, turner of the star wheel, holy father, keeper of the woods, protector of the animals. We honor you 
and ask your presence at our circle. Grant your blessings to our voices, our action, our thoughts, and to our singing, our playing, and our dancing. And I will now read the charge of the goddess. I, who am the beauty of the green earth and the white moon among the stars and the mystery of the waters and the desire of the heart of man and woman, call unto your soul, arise and come with me and come unto me for I am the soul of nature who gives life unto the universe. From me all things proceed and unto me all things must return. And before my face, beloved of gods and of men, your utmost divine self shall be enfolded in the rapture of the infinite. Let my worship be within the heart that rejoices, for behold, all acts of love and pleasure are my rituals. Therefore, let there be strength and beauty, power and compassion, honor and humility, reverence and mirth within you. And lo, you who think to seek for me, know that your seeking and yearning shall avail you not, unless you know the mystery. But if you do not find that which you seek within yourself, you will never find it without. For behold, I have been with you from the beginning, and I am that which is attained at the end of desire. I bid greetings to the spirit of the place, great guardians, who ensure its safety and sanctity. And we will now call the quarters. Would everyone now rise as you are able and face east? Powers of the East, element of air, we call you to this place to join with us in this solstice celebration. Grant your blessing to our voices and to our thoughts and to the sounds of our singing. Help us to call forth the new light. Blessed be. Would you all please face south? Powers of the South, element of fire. We call you to this place to join with us in this solstice celebration. Let your passion burn brightly in our hearts and help us to call forth the new light. Would you all please face west? We call you to this place to join with us in the solstice celebration. Let your compassion teach us we are all part of one another and how all depend on the light. Help us call forth the new light. Would you all face north? Powers of the north, element of earth, we call you to join this place in the solstice celebration. Let your wisdom teach us hope in the time of darkness. Help us to call forth the new light. Blessed be. And I will now light the solstice candle. Well, folks, it's virtually lit now. We're really kind and patient to our tech folks today because we've given them about 47 transitions. So we're going to enjoy the silences when they come. 
that we're waiting and being patient, just as we're patient for the light to return. We're patient for our Zoom to appear on our screens when it is ready. A fire is burning, the long night draws near. All who need comfort are welcome by here. We'll dance neath the stars and toast to the past year. For the spirit of solstice is still living here. We'll count all our blessings while the mother lays down with snow as her blanket covering the ground. Thanks to the mother for the life that she brings, she'll waken to warm us again in the spring. The poor and the hungry, the sick and the lost, these are our children, no matter the cost. Come by the fire, the harvest to share, for the spirit of solstice is still living here. A fire is burning, the long night draws near, all who need comfort are welcome by me. And sneak the stars and toast the past year For the spirit of solstice is still living here The spirit of solstice is still living here We pause in this holy quiet of the nourishing dark We miss the sparkling daylight hours the long days of brightness and activity. We yearn for their swift return and wonder if we can wait or if our patience will at last give out. We forget the nourishing dark at our peril. There is mystery in the dark to be probed. There's adventure of that which cannot be known, cannot be seen, can only be experienced in the soul. There is deepness in the dark, impenetrable and inviting. In the darkness, we rest our bodies and our souls. We escape that which distracts and confuses. We come face to face with ourselves. We come into the deep places of our being. Darkness is not the mere absence of light. Darkness is not simply an interval between days. Darkness is the softness of things, the blessed quiet of the night. May we not bemoan the dark, but relish it. May we feel its powerful presence and rejoice in its mystical embrace. When we peer into the shadows of the mythic forest, a startling face stares back at us. The green man, masked with leaves or disgorging foliage from his mouth. His face stares down at us from the roofs, pillars, and doorways of our great cathedrals and churches. He appears on second century Roman columns in Turkey and in Jain temples in Rajasthan. He is found all over England some parts of Wales and Scotland, and a few rare places in Ireland. He has been seen and noted in Germany, France, Italy, Holland, and is said to be found in Spain, Hungary, and Poland. India and Malaysia have their own green man, and although he doesn't seem to appear in Native American traditions, he can be seen in his modern role as a bringer of fortune on the walls of banks in New York and Chicago. His roots may go back to the shadow hunters who painted the caves of Lascaux and Altamira, and they climb through history in one of his manifestations as Robin Hood or the Morris dancers of old England to be chiseled in wood and stone, even to this day by men and women who no longer know his story, but sense that something old and strong and tremendously important lies behind his leafy mask. 
one of the earliest English epic poems, Gawain and the Green Knight, may refer yet to yet another myth manifestation of the green man as the god that dies and is reborn. He is the green man, Jack in the Green, the old man of the woods, Green George, and many other things to many other men or people. And but one common theme runs through all the disparate images and myths, death and rebirth and the green that is all life. The green man does more than merely usher in the cold breath of winter to our halls. He brings a challenge to all who would deny the power of the ancient solstice rites. He symbolizes the eternal struggle between the warmth of summer and the cold of winter, between dark and light, and emergence of the world from the dearth of winter to the birth of new life in spring. He carries a bough of holly as a token of his true nature. The green man, old as time itself, has undergone an extraordinary transformation over the centuries. Once he was the virtual embodiment of the life force that ran rampant through every green and growing thing. Today, He's recognized as a kind of a patron of the ecological movement, a representative of the natural world when humans and animals alike lived in harmony with the rest of creation. He could be the archetype of our relationship with nature. So when we sing, and the lady bore the green man, we are singing about our lady, our mother, our earth, who bears the green man as her charge to take care. Take care. Take care. Our remote ancestors said to their mother earth, we are yours. Modern humanity has said to nature, you are mine. The green man has returned as the living face of the whole earth so that through his mouth we may say to the universe, we are one. Our community is blessed by the time and talent and passionate hearts of our people, and we are sustained by your treasure. Now is the time in our service when we give our support to the mission and ministry that reflects our shared values. A time to give back to this special place that nurtures and sustains us all through pandemics and winter alike. Our four others offering this week, or this month, is uh, the Ministerial Discretion Fund, which uh, is at my discretion to use in, if there is someone in a time of special need or an emerging ministry appears before us and it's too good to miss. We have uh, some resources there to continue to serve the world with our fabulous mission. Your gifts will now be gratefully received. And for those of you in the sanctuary, there are uh, offering envelopes in a basket at the back, and you could always do that on your way out. And then on the screen will appear the many ways to give digitally as well. Thank you. and sing this one. Oh, the holly bears a berry as white as purest silk, and 
the lady by the green man when the ewes give their milk. And the lady by the green man are a hope for it to be. And the first prince of the springtime, it is the young birch tree. Birch tree, birch tree. And the first prince of the springtime, it is the young birch tree. Oh, the birch, it bears a leaf, oh, as green as the moss. And the lady bore the green man to a dance in the grass. And the lady bore the green man that merry we might be. And the princess of the May time, it is the hawthorn tree. Hawthorn, hawthorn. And the princess of the May time, it is the hawthorn tree. The hawthorn bears a prickle as keen as a thorn, and the lady bore the green man to go die in the corn, and the lady bore the green man our harvest for to be, and the first queen of the autumn is the old apple tree, apple, apple, and the first queen of the autumn is the old apple tree. And the lady bore the green man, our promise for to be. And the first king of the winter, it is the holly tree. Holly, holly. And the first king of the winter, it is the holly tree. I invite you to rise and dance in your body. You may also dance seated and dance in your spirit and your imagination. The first part of the dance you'll see in a moment, it's the great mother giving birth to him. It's a free dance, so dance as you will. When we say, when the sun comes up again, I invite you, if you're standing, to take a step forward and reach up. If you're seated, you can do this with your arms. Just reach up, it's like you're scooping up the earth. You're scooping up the sun and you're rising the sun. And then we will do a circle with our hands when the, sun, when the sun is reborn. And then just do a happy dance at the end. And I invite you to dance with us and celebrate however you choose to do so. Blessings. Sun comes up again. 
morning, everyone. It is so great to see all of you. And I really enjoyed watching all the dancing. Thank you, Ronnie Joy. That was wonderful. And today, well, I'm DRE Sheila, as many of you know. And today I have a special guest. This is my husband, Arno. Say hello, Arno. Hi. <laughs> and he's here to help me tell the story of the first song, the tale of how Yule got its name, adapted from Andrus Corbin Arthen. And so that's going to be very exciting this morning. And uh, for those of you who get our children and youth newsletter, this week's family activity is making your very own Yule log. So you'll want to check that out for this winter solstice time. And now for our fabulous story. This is the story of the very first song. It is a true story, as all stories are when you believe. It takes place a long time ago when the earth and the sun gave birth to the very first beings, the very first plants and animals and people. And it was springtime and the sun shone warm and high and bright from its perch high above the earth. And the earth proud mother that she was held and fed her newborns. And it was a time of joy and it was a time of great delight. The moon waxed and waned time and again in the night sky, and the children of the earth grew well and strong through summertime. Then autumn came, and the earth began to sleep much longer every day. She grew tired and pale. She could no longer feed her children, nor had the strength to grow new life. High above, the sun grew distant and took longer to return each morn. The night grew longer, too. Cold wind blew where none had blown before. And then one day, the earth went to sleep and she wrapped herself in a blanket of snow and rested her tired head on pillows of dried leaves. And her children could do nothing to rouse her from her slumber. And in the sky, the sun was nowhere to be seen. And the children of earth felt fear and despair. This was the longest night that they had ever known. What shall become of us, they pondered. Earth mother sleeps and father's son is oh so far away. We barely see him in the sky. What shall we do? And so they brought their fears to the moon, the sister of the sun. She closed her eyes and took a slow, deep breath to look within. She opened her soft eyes, then said, when hope is lost, the best way to get it back is with a song. Climb the tallest trees, the biggest hills, and the highest mountains, and Yule a song to reach the sun. Yule is a word from the most ancient tongues. It is related to words like yell or yodel, and it means to call out in a song. But the first kings had never heard a song. How shall we Yule, they asked. How shall we sing a song? Take the best of what you have, she said, the best of what you are and what you love your joys and your dreams, your fondest hopes, and weave them together in a sound. They stood on all places that would bring them closest to the sun. They shut their eyes and thought the best thoughts and dreamt the finest dreams. As they did, their voices rang and made a bridge of song across the sky to reach the distant sun. And he heard it, and he turned, and to where the Yulin voices called, and he drew nearer to the sleeping earth, and the earth did stir and dreamed a dream of spring and the wheel of life made its first round of hope and joy prevailed. And ever since that time of year has been called Yule in honor of the song. But the first song did not end. It had such power, such a rich allure that the first beings kept singing it. And then the second beings born of the earth took up the song as did the third on and on through the seasons and through the years until this very day. At times the song is very soft and scarcely can be heard above the clatter of our lives. But then Yule comes, rising, swelling in memory of that night when the sun heard, sparing light and life. And so do we, upon this longest night, gather with those we love and who love us, and stand upon the body of slumbering earth and light the log and lift our voices soaring to the sun and join the song that was first sung 
so very long ago. And we sing our thanks to those who went before and sing our fondest wish to those who come behind. And we bask in the returning light of reawakened hope and welcome Yule. We will now thank the directions and open the sacred circle. So I'd like to invite you to stand as you are able and face north. To the power of the north, we thank you for your presence at our winter solstice ritual. Let us carry this new light in our hearts with wisdom. To the power of the West, we thank you for your presence at our winter solstice ritual. Let us carry the new light in our hearts with compassion. Let us dream new dreams and weave them into being. Would you all turn and face south? To the powers of the south, we thank you for your presence at our winter solstice ritual. Let us carry the new light with the passion and the power of love. And would you face east? To the powers of the east. To the powers of the east. Ooh, that was cool. We thank you for your presence at our winter solstice ritual. Let us carry the new light with new thoughts and new songs. Let us begin now as a new year begins. Great God, guardians and spirits of this place, may you always be nourished as your presence has nourished us this day. Thank you, great goddess and God, for attending our winter solstice ritual. May you always find protection and may the energy of your worlds flow freely with love and inspiration. Be forever blessed. Hail and farewell. Merry meet, merry part, and merry meet again. As the circle is opened, we will symbolically do that by picking up the ribbons that we've turned and put to the back of us, holding them up for a moment, and then bringing them to the front. And now is the time when we can take our ribbons and proceed to the green man and Bedeck him with ribbons gay so that he can preside over this whole winter holiday season. For the return of the sun, we are thankful. For the gifts we give and receive, we are thankful. Yes, thankful. For all the gift givers, we are thankful. Yes, thankful. For the children of wonder, we are yes, thankful. thankful. For children everywhere, we are thankful. Yes, thankful. For sunsets and starlight, we are thankful. We are thankful. For fabulous feast days, we are thankful. We are thankful. And for those who cook them, we are thankful. Thank you.
For the tree in the corner, we are thankful. For the icicles on the trees, we are thankful. Yeah, thank For the candles in the window, we are thankful. For the song of birds, we are thankful. For animals everywhere, we are thankful. For the light on the snowfields, we are thankful. For the gifts of friendship, we are thankful. Deck the hall with boughs of holly, fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly, fa la 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 la. Dawn we now our gay apparel, fa la 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 la. Troll the ancient yuletide carol, fa la 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 la. See the blazing yule before us, fa la 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 la. Strike the harp and join the chorus, fa la 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 la. Follow me in merry measure, fa la 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 la. one and all. Please be seated. So we come to the end of our solstice service together and to the beginning of our hibernation as a congregation. In body, we shall return, each of us, to our own homes. However, the celebrations of this time of year continue online, and we do hope that you will join us uh, starting tonight at 7 o'clock with the Winter Holiday Epic Online Sing-Along on YouTube. And if you don't have that YouTube link, um, just visit the church website at calgaryunitarians.ca, click on the events page, and it will take you directly to that information. So seven o'clock, and yes, you can sing along because the lyrics will be projected. Our Christmas Eve service this year, Unitarian Lessons and Carols, will also be entirely online, and we invite you to join us for that service at seven o'clock on Christmas Eve, Friday, December the 24th, where there will be, yes, more singing and stories as well. Um, as we continue into our hibernation, there is no coffee hour today, though we thank you warmly, those who have been in the, in the hall with us and those who have been joining at home. For you, I believe there is a Zoom coffee hour and the link will be provided for you shortly uh, in the Zoom chat area of your screen. Be well, friends, and happy holidays.